You want citations, bitch? You want fucking science? Go to college. You get what you pay for. This is YouTube, motherfucker. Let's talk about autism and the spectrum. We're all on the spectrum. That's inherent to the idea of a spectrum. If you say that something is on a spectrum, everything has to be on that spectrum. Because if you're on the far end of the spectrum, it means not having it. Like, like that's what the like the, the far end of a spectrum is. You know, you're you're every, you're either you have it super a lot or you just don't at all. But you're somewhere on there. So let's explain what even is a spectrum. First of all, we got to talk about genetic diversity. Everybody is a little bit different. Nobody comes out exactly the same. Let's say you had two people who are basically identical, except the only difference whatsoever is that one guy is an inch taller than the other guy. Well, it still means that their bodies operate differently. And if your body operates differently, your brain operates differently. Let's say that it takes a certain amount of time for a synapse to fire for you to take a step. Well, it takes a little longer for the guy with the longer legs. So something is different. Is there any meaning in that difference? Anything measurable? Nothing other than that it takes a, a second longer or however, you know, whatever fraction of a second it takes longer for that synapse to fire. But there is a difference. And if you study chaos theory, then you know that the more complex the uh, starting position of something, like if, if, if there's a, a million variables, which there are in a human being, then any one little change will cause a splintering effect that goes totally fucking crazy. The, the butterfly effect, as they call it. Like you step on a butterfly in the past, and now the whole fucking future is different. Like, that's what it's like in your brain, because there's so much fucking shit going on. So even if it seems like this change should be so minute that it shouldn't do anything, it could have far-reaching ramifications for how these two people actually end up living and thinking. We all know that evolution is about the survival of the fittest. It's about who can has the best genes that they can pass on. Well, you got two guys that are functionally the exact same, but the one guy is an inch taller. Now, most people aren't going to notice that inch as like a big enough deal, but if we're functioning like a computer, if a computer is matching people up and physicality is the only thing that matters because we're in a primitive society, it's going to match the best female with the taller guy. That's going to happen. Even though it's such a minute difference between all of this that it doesn't even fucking matter in the end, that is what the computer will choose. And so this, this is how genetic diversity uh, continues, is that like... There's this constant observation of what is the fittest, because the fittest means something very different depending on location and society and the structure of fucking everything. Because, like, the fittest as a literal physical concept is largely irrelevant in most cultures. In our culture, it's who has the most money is the fittest. That's why the richest men get to fuck the hottest girls, as they, you know... In, in terms of, like, the construct, the mental idea of what it all is. Like, don't take anything I'm saying in this literally. I don't speak literally. That's not a thing I do. So, it's all figurative because language is a fucking game. Language is not real. It's just fucking... It's, it's metaphors used to describe reality, all right? So, so, the richest people fuck the hottest girls. That's the construct of how society works because to be rich is to be the fittest to continue living in a society that is based around money being the way to, to get things. You see what I'm saying? So, all right, let's say you've got an island nation and the conditions for everyone living there are exactly the same. The weather is the same. The, you know, they're all in a small little tightly knit group. This is probably what you would describe as genetically incestuous. It is why sometimes Southeast Asian countries that are island nations are described as genetically incestuous. Because the, the people, like the reason, the stereotype that all Asians look the same, it, well, like it comes from this, that they're in the same conditions. But when you leave, if someone were to leave that society and set up a society somewhere else that has different conditions, they will go down a different evolutionary path. So now you've got the people in this island nation who are continuing to basically be the same, and then the people who move to this island, and they're evolving totally differently. Go read The Evolution of the Species. Uh, that's what it's about. Uh, turtles in the Galapagos doing this. So now these two, they decide to mingle, and they produce a third thing that's completely different from either of the two things, and now that's got its own genetic chain, and there's a melting pot, and it's all fucking everywhere. And again... 
in a society where physicality means less and less, where social constructs are what determines what is the fittest, and social constructs are totally wildly different everywhere in the world, it means that, like, genetic diversity is just fucking crazy. It's just, it's all over the place. Everyone's fucking everybody. Everyone's having a million fucking crazy random-ass genetic chains. None of it has logic that you can, like, easily parse. And I mean, everyone's trying to reproduce. It's not like the fittest are the only ones who are trying to reproduce. There's so many people that, like, you can have generations and generations of, like, people who aren't even the fittest just populating everywhere. And, like, those people gotta look out for themselves, too. They gotta develop their own systems that they can continue to subsist by. Like, if you're not born the fittest, you gotta try your hardest to fit, to keep living. You see? This is fucking crazy. Everybody's different. Everyone's going all over the place. So... Let's create a brain chart. Here is a uh, god. He's he's like the first man, you know, and uh, the first woman is made from his rib cage. This is metaphorical, by the way. Uh, so they're they're like pretty genetically similar, right? They have a kid who's kind of like both of them, and like they have another kid, and another kid, and these two sisters fuck, and they have a kid, and then like. You know, you get all these people, and they're genetic, they're genetically diverging from each other in slight ways because just naturally people don't all come out the same, regardless of, of circumstances, but, like, they're all pretty similar, right? And then you got some of them, they move on to this other island, and they start diverging a little bit genetically, but then they've got their community, and it's genetic diversity that's going on. And then the people who are the fusions of these. And you see how even if there's a lot of them that are similar or close together, we're, we're, we're moving. This cluster is moving. All these people are, are different and they're getting more and more different the farther they move away from the source. The more generations pass, the more children are born. And, you know, there's, there's different traits that... In a, in a society that's got more people, different traits are more, you know, uh, valued than the ones that were in the beginning. Like, at the very start, it would have been like, hey, it's just two guys versus fucking lions. But now it's like six guys versus lions, and we don't really need six guys to fight the lions. So two of those guys might be farmers, and now farmers are having kids, and they're all, com you know, they're like kind of their own genetic train that's coming on over here. But, like, the farmer's daughter fell in love with... The guy who fucking fights lions. Well, what's their kid going to be? Is he going to fight lions or is he going to be a daughter? A fucking, I mean, a farmer. Like, I don't know. So, all these people are different, right? Now, let's say that we put all of these people in a lineup. We, we, we looked at all of their, their differences, and we put them in a lineup based on how similar they are. So, we start with one guy, just arbitrarily, and we find the guy who is the most similar to that guy and line him up next to that guy. And we keep doing that until we've got all the guys. This is the human spectrum. It's all the people lined up. And so this guy and this guy are pretty fucking similar. But this guy and this guy are not so similar. Now, all humans are pretty similar. We all have the same basic needs. So, like, you know, we all eat, sleep, fuck drink and um, not even all of us fuck sometimes people just don't fuck i don't know how much of that is psychological how much of it like i don't know if there are people who are biologically don't fuck um i haven't researched that but there's definitely people who don't fuck regardless of why so we have our human spectrum now returning to this cluster of brains let's say that someone moves off to a way far off island and in just a few short generations, their genetics have completely diverged from the original guys. Like, they are not even really similar to these dudes because the conditions for life and the, the structure of society is so different over here that these guys don't even find these guys relatable. Well, this is kind of like how countries are. Like, these guys' needs are totally different from these guys, so they don't want to be considered part of the same governing body. So they just split apart. Well, let's say that this country right here keeps growing bigger and bigger, generations are passing, society is changing, and like, 
the meaning of who is the fittest is evolving all the time. Because, you know, with every generation, it's a whole different world. It's a whole different ball game. There's more people, there's new technology, there's, there's just everything's fucking different, right? So, the governing body of this country, their goal is to try to make sure that this country works for as many of the people inside of it as possible. And the society itself will naturally adapt to try to suit the needs of, of as many people as possible. Because anybody whose needs aren't being met is going to speak up and be like, hey, my needs aren't met. And then everyone else is going to look at that person and have to make a decision. Do we give enough of a fuck about this person to meet their needs? Or are their needs unreasonable because we don't relate to them? This guy down here, he's, he's a 12-year-old a um, Minecraft savant. And his needs are totally different from this 80-year-old fucking engineer up here. And they're like, they can't reconcile with each other. Because this guy doesn't care about this guy's needs. And this guy doesn't care about this guy's needs. Uh, so this is where social progress comes from. It's just this constant competition of needs between different people. And as a society, we overall are hoping to make everybody function. Because if you can placate this kid's needs, it's possible something he's going to do maybe helps out this guy over here, and this guy is uh, is directly related to you. So let's say 80-year-old um, man's caretaker spends all of his time watching YouTube videos of Minecraft Let's Plays made by this 12-year-old, because he's a savant. And so, like, ultimately this kid has a benefit to this man, but he can't understand it or comprehend it. And that's why we try to meet the needs of as many people as possible, even if we don't necessarily understand why they have those needs. And not everyone can communicate their needs very well. In fact, there's a lot of people whose specific struggle is their inability to communicate correctly. And those people have a really rough time. So, alright, let's draw out this gigantic thing of brains again. Our, our brain chart. Now... On this part of the brain line, there's a whole lot of the, like, original genetic pool of people. But, down here, this guy was extremely successful. And, uh, a lot of people tried to copy his lifestyle. Uh, people who thought kind of similarly to him, they saw him succeed because he innovated something completely new. Uh, let's say he's a computer technician, and before this period... No one, no, none of these people know what the fuck a computer is, but this guy's unique mind worked really well with computers. And so people saw that he could be successful doing that, and they started pursuing computers as well. And so they got a lot of money, and since money is what gets you reproduction in this country, they have tons and tons of kids. And now there's this whole other set of people who are similar to each other, but they're not similar to these guys. But you need both of these sets in order to run the country. Because these guys are running all the computers. And these guys are running all the factories. And they need each other. So, whichever group has the most people in it, that's the one that we call the normies. And it's not that they're necessarily all the same. They're, they're just kind of clustered together. There's a lot of them that are kind of similar. And that represents a bell curve. So, if you're a part of the bell curve, it means that a lot of society is dedicated to meeting your needs. And because of the fact that if you were to, say, try to make a movie, and you want this movie to reach as many people as possible, well, you could make a movie aimed at this guy, but this guy is totally unique. There's not a lot of people like him. There's like maybe five people who think like this guy. And if you made a movie that was perfect for that guy, these people, they're going to, some of them might get it and kind of relate, but a lot of them aren't going to give a fuck. So the easiest way would be to just make something that is directly made for this group, to try to appeal to as many of these people as possible. And again, you can make something that just appeals broadly to everybody because humans are all pretty much the same on certain base levels. Um, but, you know, if you appeal to these guys, you're going to make easier money. It's going to be a lot easier. But this also means that you're in competition with everyone else who's trying to appeal to these guys. And that's basically everybody. So if you identify that, hey, there's also this group over here who's kind of big themselves, 
we could try appealing to them instead, and we won't make as much money as these guys will, but we still have, you know, there's enough of them that we can make a profit, right? So, this is what different subcultures and cliques and what different genres are aimed at. It's just to try to attack whichever groups are big enough to have a mound. So, in light of all this, what exactly is autism? Well, let's say that the way your brain functions, you can't use language. You don't know how to talk and communicate with people. You just, you, you probably have a lot of difficulty fitting into society because these people all have an easy time with language, an easy time with understanding other humans. That's what they've built their society around. But you, down here, you don't relate to those people. You don't understand how their society works. And so society's not built around you. And so when society comes into contact with you, they say, well, you have a mental disorder because whatever your, the way your brain works just doesn't, it doesn't go with the, the way we've built society. Now, let's say that this guy is severely autistic. He can't even talk. But this guy is just really socially inept. But it's, it's still because his brain is completely different from the people who are over here. Well, there was a time when we would refer to this guy as autism and this guy as Asperger's. However, eventually we realized that drawing a clear line of distinction between one and the other was kind of unhelpful because some people are like right on this side of the line or right on this side of the line and it's like, well, are we going to treat these people differently from these ones? Like, how far do you have to be to be Asperger's or autism? And that was when they decided to call it a spectrum. But when they did that, it was revealing of the fact that it's all a spectrum. You're just, if you're, if you're far enough down, because like, well, do we draw a line between these people and say like, this is Asperger's, but if you go past this point, you're, you're normal? Well, in a society where having Asperger's isn't necessarily, like, difficult to live with because a lot of the, the, the things that these people are good at um, can allow them to propagate. And there's enough other people with it that they're having whole fucking generational families of Asperger's. Well, if the Asperger's have their own bell curve and their own needs being met in society, then you can't call it a mental disorder because they're functioning just fine. Because all a mental disorder is, is your brain works different enough from regular brains that you just can't function in society. But that's not a problem with you. That's a problem with society. Society doesn't have a place for you. Society doesn't have a use for you. And that's unfortunate for you. But if there were enough of you, society would be different. Now, we've reached a point where there is a lot of fucking people with Asperger's, and society is changing for those people because a lot of them are doing things to change it, to move the Overton window of understanding from being right here to extending it out to here. This graph is becoming a fucking mess. But, like, the further you move the Overton window so that society has to understand these people, the more these people are able to have their needs met within that society. Ergo... When I talk about autism, I like to present the idea that, that all of these people are autism. And the reason I want to present it that way is so that we can get better understanding and representation for these people. Because the more of these people identify that they are just further down this spectrum than they are from these people, and that that's not a problem, that society is changing to acquiesce to those people, that they have a function that these people can't perform, that these people need these people, the more we understand that, the less these people have to feel so alienated, the more they can take pride in who they are, the more they can embrace the idea that they are th this, this genetic divergence that has a purpose. Now, for me... Here's my normie cloud, here's my uh, Asperger's cloud, we're starting over. Um, I fall somewhere around here, but I happen to be 
in a space where, regardless, like, look, okay, let's say there's, like, a shit ton of people more autistic than me, and a shit ton of people less, it doesn't matter, it's, it's not about how autistic you are, it's about how few people are in your section. I don't feel like there's a lot of people in my section. Because there is some stuff like Sonic the Hedgehog or Thomas the Tank Engine that broadly appeals to all these guys down here, and there's some shit like basic-ass anime, like Darling in the Franks, that appeals to all these kids right here. But the amount of stuff that appeals to this guy in the middle is a lot fewer. And that's why I'm constantly having to watch everything to figure out what the fuck I'm looking for. And this all has nothing to do with IQ or intelligence or even really your ability to fit into society because while society is built around these guys and there's a lot of it that's built around these guys is if you just figure out how to make a place for yourself you can figure out how to live in that society so even though my men mentality is not really good for these kids jobs or these kids jobs I made my own job and what I do is that a lot of my audience is the people who are, like, right here with me. And those are usually, like, the patrons, the hardcore fans, the ones who are relatively close. But I deliberately make content that appeals to this other cloud over here. And that's why I am so misunderstood by so many of the people who watch my videos. Because I'm, I'm not really representing myself in order to appeal to them. I have to represent what they care about so that I can get their attention. Because, again, you have to market to at least one bell curve, whether it's the biggest one or just this smaller one that's over here. So, this is what I mean when I say we're all on the spectrum, when I say lots of people have autism, because a lot of people only perceive the super extreme cases as the people with autism. And let me tell you, I've spent most of my life around people who have been diagnosed with autism. And that is a huge range of people with a huge range of personalities and a huge range of lifestyles. My cousin Evan is diagnosed with autism. I talked about him in my Turkey Tom Gets Roasted video. And he's like far flung in the direction of like can't really communicate with people in a way that is healthy or makes them comfortable but he's not low functioning like he can he he can understand concepts he can commu he can talk to people like you can reason with him it's just that he's you know not capable of like the full range of understanding and and relating that uh, that the people over here are. But then there's other people who are autistic who are, like, so far gone they literally can't even talk. But then there's other people who are just like, yeah, I don't fit into society, but I understand it, and, like, I've spent enough time working with people that I've got my own way of understanding how people think. Like, I can't read expressions. I don't know what the fuck... I don't know half the shit people are talking to me about. Like, literally, when I'm out in public, I don't know what the fuck anyone's talking about. I have had to figure all of how to talk to people out by just figuring out how to make it make sense to me. How can I restructure what these people are saying in a way that I'll understand, and then I can communicate back to them by trying to find something that they'll understand. The way I talk in a, a video is manufactured. I didn't talk like this when I was a kid. I didn't know how to fucking explain myself. I'd rather make a fucking song, and then I make the song, and everyone's like, oh, I don't know what the fuck this song's about. This song's fucking weird. And I'm like, well, let me try, let me sit here and toil over explaining it for a while, but, you know, I've practiced at it and I've gotten good at it. So, like, my point is that, yeah, like, I might be even more autistic than a guy next to me who is, like, dumber than a fucking brick and has no idea how to communicate or talk to people and has an even harder time talking to normies than I do, but that's because I am... Because I am more autistic than them, I have had to struggle with learning how to communicate even more. This has been my obsession. This is all I'm trying to do. So, like, using words to explain myself, that is my specialty. That is what I have fucking trained for. And so you just need to expand your understanding of what it can cause. Again, butterfly effect. That butterfly effect. Every little difference between two people, you have no idea what that's going to amount to. And this is why medication is so dangerous for some of these conditions where it tries to broadly categorize a bunch of totally different people 
whose conditions have totally different effects on their lives and just give them the same thing, the same treatment. Or like even using a term like autism. Again, the reason that it had to become a spectrum instead of autism versus Asperger's is that if you treat everyone with autism one way and everyone with Asperger's another way, it's it's not just going to be so cut and dry as to work for everyone in either category. We're all on the spectrum. I hope I've explained this enough to make sense. If not, let me know, and I'll fucking do it again.